Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I will be moving forward from console applications and into the graphical space with the help of SFML. SFML stands for Simple and Fast Multimedia Library and it provides many components to create our own graphical interface. And today I will be using it to start creating a game called Breakout. Now you have most likely heard of Breakout, it is an arcade video game which was released in 1976. I have left more info about SFML and Breakout in the description below. So make sure if, if you have more questions you can also always check that out. For, we are going to be create, starting with a setup, so obviously we have to create the window itself which is going to play the game. So that's what I'm doing here, it's called a render window and I have decided to have the width as 910 and the height as 512 so that it follows the 16 by 9 ratio. We can change that later on as well if, if we need. Then I created this Y loop. This is our main loop and we also have to handle events such as closed for example. So when the user wants to close we can save like game and so on. But I just I will just close the window when they want it and we can see that it works here. We also have to clear every single frame we have to clear and display and between the clear and display we will draw stuff every single frame. Now we will add our player which is gonna be a board so it's a rectangle shape with a size 125 and 25. We can also set the color I decided to set it as blue for now. Our position is going to be on the x-axis it's going to be middle of the screen right and the y is going to be almost the screen height with just a very small offset. I decided it's going to be 10 pixels but like I said we can change that later as well. And now we just have to draw the player as well. And if we turn it on, we can see, yeah, it works. It, it wasn't really in the middle of the screen as I thought. So I I just did 910 divided by 2, which is going to give us our middle. Now we're going to ha handle movement. And what we first did is adding a delta time. Okay. And we also I also added player velocity, which is just a float because it can only move on the x-axis and also the player speed. <coughs> now we're just checking so for user input input. So if if we press A then the play, player velocity is gonna be equal to negative player speed times delta time. And if D is pressed, well it's the exact opposite. So it's gonna be just the player speed times delta time. And then we can, we also have to make sure to set the player velocity to equal to zero every single frame. And we're also going to move our player with player velocity on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis. Now I forgot to, I, I think I'm going to remember now to actually use the delta time, right? So we have to have a new value for delta time every single frame and it moves but as you can see now we can go outside of the window and that's not really good so we're gonna have put some window bounds on it and it's simple so if the if the player position is less than zero well then we can just set our x value to zero you know that's that's no problem but on the right side it's a bit more complicated so if our x position plus our width is greater than window width, we're gonna set our x equal to window width minus the player width. And that's a bit what I did here. So we're gonna set our x to window width minus the player dot get global bounds, which can just give us the size. And that's, yeah pretty much it. We can see that I'm trying to move and it doesn't work. 
so awesome. So that's kind of what I did this, I mean, I quick little video I know, but on the next video I will like to get a ball so that it can bounce from side to side and also a player can also bounce, I mean, uh, the ball can bounce from the board, That's so that's what I'm going to be focusing on in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next one.